The notion that the DPRK may have successfully tested a hydrogen bomb earlier this week sent shockwaves around the world. By any measure, it would be a game changer for the region and beyond. Reaction was swift. The United Nations Security Council strongly condemned the underground nuclear test, pledging to pursue new sanctions as governments and scientists expressed skepticism over Pyongyang's claims. A neighboring Republic of Korea raised its military alert to the highest level, saying it was in talks with the United States to deploy strategic weapons along the Korean peninsula. Later, we'll have reaction from several international scholars, but we begin with the latest from CCTV's Nathan King, who's in our newsroom. And Nathan, there's been a lot of skepticism that this was actually an hydrogen bomb test, as claimed by the DPRK. What do we know about it? Well, testing's still in the preliminary phases, but what the authorities here in Washington and elsewhere are saying, that the seismic readings from this explosion just don't add up to a bomb the size of a hydrogen bomb. These things are measured in kilotons or megatons, small nuclear weapons in kilotons. This is about maybe as much as six uh, to eight. Uh, that is far away from hydrogen bombs, which are in the thousands. In fact, the Soviets tested one which was over 50,000 uh, kilotons, the Americans over 20,000 uh, during uh, the Cold War. So this is far away from that. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't had a technological leap. What some scientists are saying is this may have been an enhanced uh, atomic bomb with some sort of hydrogen element, or that the timing systems, and these things are very technical, but the timing systems involved went off and didn't quite work. But what is clear is that this seems to be the DPRK's fourth nuclear test. Despite all the pressure, uh, despite all the sanctions, uh, the uh, the government of Kim Jong-un is second test, and of course they're also moving rapidly ahead with ballistic missile te technology as well. Now, Nathan, as we've been hearing, condemnation has come from all quarters, including China. What happens next? What tangible steps are we likely to see? Well, we're seeing a, a UN Security Council resolution being drawn up, but the devil is in the detail. Uh, before, both China and the US have allowed the DPRK what they call strategic space to come back to the six-party talks, which involves all the neighbors in the region and uh, the US as well. That hasn't happened. The US wants a very strong resolution. They're actually pushing China to ban DPRK ships from Chinese ports. They also want financial restrictions like those imposed on the Iranians during the nuclear standoff there. And the Americans have accused the Chinese of basically allowing Korea too much, North Korea too much space. Uh, China has hit back and says, look, part of the reason the DPRK is so resolute in having a nuclear weapon is because of the US presence on the peninsula and the history surrounding uh, the Korean War, which of course has never officially ended. So these things uh, need to be worked out going forward, but both Beijing and Washington need to be on the same side, but both are very, very annoyed with Pyongyang. Remember, Pyongyang has normally warned Beijing ahead of time about these nuclear tests. It did not do so this time. Thanks, Nathan. That's CCTV's Nathan King reporting.